process, what we're going to do is we're going to live stream in our Teams interface, but we're not going to use the Teams interface. What we're going to do is we're going to use Zoom in order to live stream. And so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to first go into our Teams interface. And we're going to use the web app in order to do this. And once we arrive inside of the interface, what we're going to do is we're going to add an application. We can either do it from this menu or we can go through the apps menu. Now, if you don't see it, you can find the Zoom app from this menu. And you'll see Zoom as one of the choices available. What you're going to do is you're going to click this button and you're going to add Zoom as an application to your interface. And what you're then going to need to do is go to My Meetings in order to get your Zoom set up. What you're going to do from this point is you're going to sign into your Zoom account. You'll be required to give your Zoom login and password. Now you are going to need to have a Zoom account in order to do this. What you're then going to need to do is you're going to need to sign into your Microsoft account. and You're going to make sure to use the one that is associated with your Teams account. What you will then see inside of the Teams interface is a Zoom interface that you're familiar with if you are already a Zoom user. So what you can do here is you can click this button that says start a meeting. And what you can do here is you can start by looking for individuals that are already on your team. What we're going to do is we're going to add individuals to our team so that we can take advantage of what Zoom has to offer us. And what you're going to do is you're going to start the meeting by typing in the names of the individuals that are already on your team. Once you have the names, you can then click Start. Zoom will then open up the Zoom interface that you will have available to you through Teams. And what you'll do is you'll then conduct your Zoom meeting or webinar. And once you've completed this Zoom meeting, what you'll do is you'll click the End button. You'll then click End Meeting for All. What you can also do inside the Zoom interface is schedule a meeting in Zoom. So for example, what we can do here is we can click Zoom Meeting and we can schedule a meeting with the participants from your team. And if you are using Zoom Rooms, you can write them in. However, what you can do is you can set your times. And once you've done that, now you can write in your participants for the meeting and then what you can do is you can save the meeting. If you're going to use a meeting password, and typically you are going to, you can then set that password here in this area. You can set the Zoom parameters for the meeting. Enable join before host, mute participants upon entry, enabling the waiting room, and to record the meeting automatically. If you want to designate others as the host, you can do that. Again, these are features that you're probably already familiar with if you have a Zoom account. Once you've saved these things, you can then click Save. Your Zoom meeting will then be available to you. Individuals that are already connected on their mobile device will also receive notice of your Zoom meeting on their mobile device instantly from the time that the meeting is set. In order to start the meeting, all you need to do is to click this Start button. Now, if you want to make this invitation available to others, all you need to do is to click Copy Invitation. That invitation will then be copied to the clipboard. What you'll want to do is to make sure that you don't just take the information just from the copied data. You're going to have to get the actual link from within that data. You're going to copy it and that's the link you're going to pass on to others if you want them to attend and they are outside of your organization in Microsoft Teams. That individual will then get an invitation and they'll be able to log into the Zoom meeting from their web browser. Now that is the basic process for attaching Zoom to your Microsoft Teams account in order to hold a meeting with individuals within your organization within Teams as well as individuals outside of your team that you would have on your webinar through Zoom. Now what we can also do is we can connect to Teams using GoToMeeting. And to do that, we are going to go to this apps area. When we get to the apps area, we're going to look for GoToMeeting. If we don't see it, we're going to type in GoToMeeting. 
and we'll simply start by typing in the first few letters and then you should see GoToMeeting become available to you here in the top left. What we're then going to do is we're going to add. Now you'll want to be aware of these choices. You can add GoToMeeting directly to a team or you can add it to a chat. So according to the needs that you want, you can add directly to a specific team. What you're going to do then is you're going to choose a specific channel within your team in order to add GoToMeeting. So let's assume that for the sake of this video that we had a separate channel and we have a channel for the specific aspect of our project management. Let's assume then that the privacy is going to be standard. We're then going to click add and add the channel. That channel is now going to be available inside of our team. We're now going to do is we're going to go back to add go to meeting. We're going to click go to meeting. We're then going to choose to add to a specific team. We're then going to type in the name of the team or we'll start by typing it in. We'll see the channel. We'll then add the channel and what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says set up a bot. Now what we can do is we can go to this area for our added applications. We can then click on the go to meeting application. What we can then do is go to our dashboard. What we'll then need to do is to sign into our GoToMeeting account. Now again, you are going to need to have an existing GoToMeeting account in order to use this feature. And what you'll see is a version of GoToMeeting inside of your Microsoft Teams. You'll see the interface in which you can start a meeting and then copy the invitation in order to pass on to others once the meeting begins inside of Teams. In order to create that meeting, you can create a meeting specifically and you can do that meeting for the future. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that if you go to this history button, you're going to see your go to meeting history. So this history will not be specific to your team's account. In fact, what go to meeting is doing is just transferring the information from go to meeting inside your team's interface. And once you are inside of teams again, what you can do is you can click this button that's going to bring up your go to meeting actions. And what you can do from that point is you can start a meeting or you can join one already in progress. And you can do the same thing with Zoom. You can start a meeting or you can schedule a meeting. Now, if you choose to add go to meeting or Zoom, the issue will be the messaging that others will get that are outside of your organization versus the messaging people will get inside of your organization. And one of the things that you can do to bridge the gap is to add in a messaging system. So in this case, we're going to click on more applications. What we're going to do is we're going to look for an email service provider. Now, if you were to go and you were to add the get response application, one of the things that you'll want to note is that what this application does is it sends notification from get response into Microsoft Teams. That may not be what you want if you're trying to sync up your messaging. And the same thing's basically going to be true within MailChimp. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that Zoom will create your recording inside of the application and will not do it specifically for Zoom. That means then that what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to integrate with a messaging system, but we're going to need to do it outside of Teams. We're going to need to make the connection to Zoom instead of with Microsoft Teams. That means then that we're going to make the connection between Zoom and our email service provider through a third-party cloud-based connector like Zapier. Now, if you aren't familiar with Zapier and you don't have an account, Zapier does have a free 14-day trial for you to be able to experience the premium features. And what Zapier basically does is it automates the connection between two cloud-based services. In this case, we want to connect both GoToMeeting and Zoom to an email service provider like GetResponse or MailChimp or relevant email service providers. And what you can typically do is you can go to your favorite search engine. You can write in the word Zapier integration. And you can then write in the names of the applications that you want to connect. 
In this case, we're going to write in Zoom and we're also going to write in Get Response. Once we do that, we're then going to click Enter for Search. And you're going to notice that there is an integration between Zoom and Get Response. We're going to want to see what that connection is. And what we want to do is we want to have the trigger to be someone signing up for a webinar on Zoom because that individual is going to be outside of our organization. We want to be able to track that individual as well as to send them messages. What we want to do is we want to have that individual automatically added to our Get Response list. And so from there, inside of Get Response, we want to create a contact. Now, if you're using a different email service provider, you're going to want to do the same thing within your email service provider. You are creating basically a contact or a subscriber when someone signs up for your meeting in Zoom. So what you're going to do if you have a Zapier account is you're going to connect GetResponse and Zoom. If you don't have a Zapier account, then what you'll need to do in order to test this integration is that you're going to need to sign up for a free account. Now, once you're inside of Zapier, you're going to give this particular connection a specific name. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that our Zoom account is connected to Zapier. If it isn't, what you're going to do here is you're going to click this down arrow and you're going to add a new account. When you add that new account, what you're going to do is you're going to sign into your Zoom account in order to make the connection between Zoom and Zapier. Once you're inside of Zoom, what you're going to do is you're going to select the meeting that has already been set up. You're then going to click continue. Zapier will require you to test your trigger. Once you've done that, you'll then move to the next step. Now you're then going to need to connect your existing GetResponse account. What you're then going to do is designate the action that you want to happen, which is to create a contact. You're then going to click continue. Now, if you have an existing GetResponse account, or whatever your email service provider is, you're going to connect it at this stage. If you have to add a new account, Zapier is going to require that you go into your GetResponse account and get your API key in order to connect Zapier with your GetResponse account. Once you've connected, you'll then click continue. You're then going to choose a specific list that you want the individuals to be sent to when they sign up for Zoom. You're then going to map the rest of the required features. Once you've done that, you'll then click continue. You'll then click test and continue. Once you've done that, you will have completed the process. Anytime someone registers for the specific meeting that you have set up in Zoom, they will then be added to your get response list where you can set up automated email messages as well as to be able to broadcast messages to the individuals that are part of this new list. Now we can walk through the same process now for go to meeting. And what we can do here is we can then go back to our dashboard for Zapier. In most cases, the fastest way to find out if there is an integration between the autoresponder you want to use and the meeting or webinar platform is to write in the words Zapier integration and then write in the two applications you want to determine that you want to connect. Now, according to Zapier, if there is a new meeting within GoToMeeting, we can then have a contact created inside of the autoresponder get response. Now, once again, you don't have to use get response. You'll need to think of the same concept inside of the email service provider that you use. We're using get response here as an example. We are then going to click on connect, go to meeting and get response. Now, assuming you have an existing go to meeting account, you are going to need to connect it here. If you don't have one, you're going to need to connect it here. Once the interface is connected, you'll then click continue. What you're then going to do is to test your trigger and then you'll go through the same process that you did with Zoom. You're going to need to choose your get response account. You're going to want to create a contact and then click continue. You'll then select your get response account. You'll then click continue. You're going to map the appropriate values that are required. Now, in this case, one of the things you're going to notice is that when we are attempting to map out the value that we will not have an email address given to us by the data from GoToMeeting. That means then that we will not be able to make the connection between 
our meeting software, and our email service provider. That means that if you're choosing between providers, GoToMeeting, or Zoom, and you want to be able to message individuals about the contents of the meeting, or even the nature of the meeting, you may want to choose Zoom over GoToMeeting. And so basically what we've done is we've conducted a live meeting using Zoom as well as GoToWebinar. We've also attempted to connect our messaging application to the Zoom meeting inside of Teams. We discovered that using GoToMeeting really means that we won't be able to use an external messaging system. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next process.